so easy to be given to the things of this world and to be worried, to be concerned um, for the things of this life. I love this, Jesus said this, let your heart not be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So it's very important for us to entrust our souls to God and live in that faith, you know. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as all of you have. For he has said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. This is very important uh, that I say, because we're so connected to emotions. And, uh, and there's a time in my life I was so given to how I'm feeling. It's very interesting because, you know, the soul is that part of us that says, I feel like, you know, and the mind says, I think, and the flesh says, I want, you know, but the soul is that part of us, is the conscience, is the will, so that the soul is very easy to not be able to tell where the spirit and the soul start and end but the soul is very you know and god wants us to live by faith in god and uh, sometimes we can be so too much in our soul you know we if you go by feelings and feelings change a lot from one minute to next uh, today i was listening to some uh, Christian music and it was music I used to listen to as well in the past and I could relate to a lot of the pain in the song I like this music in the past I would listen a lot to this music and it would make me feel better because I could relate to a lot of what they were singing about but today I realized that I can't listen to that song in that same way because it's feeding the soul if it makes sense it's feeding the soul when i should rather be feeding the the spirit and the spirit uh, uh, the spirit breathes with faith the spirit breathes with faith it says the righteous shall live by faith the spirit uh and it says Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And there's something, we are born again by the word of God, by the incorruptible seed of the word. As we hear the word, it shifts our perception more than that. But it transitions us uh, to live in the spirit where we start to define our lives by what the word of God says not what the world says you know because it's very easy and i say this because if you're somebody who's struggling with disappointment in your life uh discontentment you have to ask where is that coming from where is that disappointment coming from does it not come from looking comparing your life to the world uh, That means you have not really entrusted to God your soul. And you're not fully trusting in God. Uh, and sometimes that's the source of uh, our being troubled, you know. And I realized there were times I could be sad about my situation, about situations in my life, do you know? And I just felt sad. And at times I would pray from that place. But now I don't pray like that anymore. Because now I look at my circumstances differently. Like as defined by the word of God. And I expect it because the word of God says it. You know, and I consider this present suffering is not worthy to be compared to the glory 
that will be revealed to us. And uh, we also called to sh share in his sufferings. And it reminds me that I do not belong to this world. And it gives me hope because I put my eyes on Christ and on going home because I shouldn't feel too comfortable in this world because this world has been subjected to, to decay and this world belongs to the evil one. I used to think being sad and praying from that place would make God almost feel sorry for me and help me and, uh, and it's very different because God cares for us. That's why he says, cast your burdens. But you have to understand that it's different because God may not change your circumstance. And that's not necessarily bad. Why? Because God is more interested in your spirit, not the, natural, not the flesh. Do you know? And, and God may see it uh, more profitable to you to endure the cross and learn to deny yourself and come out of your flesh and live in the spirit. And I'm saying this because when you come, when you fully surrender your heart to Jesus, you find the joy that comes from his presence, the joy of his salvation. You, there's, a, there's, there's a joy, altogether different joy. It's peace that transcends understanding. He can be, anyone else can perhaps look at your life and think, how do you survive? How, how do you not break down through what you're going through in life? But you have this peace. You have Jesus in you. You have the hope of eternal life. You have heaven in sight. His presence abides in you. And because you don't love the world you have the love of the father i want to share with you another one of my secrets in my, in my personal life and it's this that sometimes it's very good to withdraw yourself from people and being around people and just being by yourself and seek god and what that does is it helps you stop feeding off the opinions of other people and you find the voice of God in your life, what God says about you, opposed to what the world says. And sometimes you don't really know who you are until you're by yourself. Because around people, you wanna be something uh, that people approve of, that people accept. So you, you are not yourself, you know, and you find, if you're anything like me, I used to be, I, I see this, uh, hypocrisy in me because I would be different things in different circles if I was with this group of friends or with that group of friends depending and what I I'll do anything to fit the so they could look at me in that way uh, and respect me you know and like me and and until you know I look at myself and I'm who am I really if here I'm this person and when I'm there I'm this person and these two are in contradiction now and I'm like who am I really but at the end of the day who, who really am I because I'm putting on a show uh, because I want people to like me but who really am I and it's very important uh, and when I started to withdraw myself and spend time with God and reading the Bible I am what the Word of God says I am that's the real person I'm not in conflict anymore about what I want to who I want to be who I want to <laughs> I want to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ I'm not in conflict anymore I'm not uh, pulled so even finally when I'm around people I'm not swayed if I see people going that way I'm not going to follow them <laughs> because, <laughs> because I know who I am. Do you know? I'm not tossed about by the wind. 
I'm not tossed about by the sea. I'm not tossed about um, because I'm firmly rooted in Christ and His Word. So it's very important to withdraw yourself sometimes. And I want to say this because also in the past I used to feel lonely sometimes. Uh, but now I, I don't feel lonely. I love being by myself with God. Are you kidding? I love me. Do you know? And, and it's so weird because it's actually when I'm in the world that I start to hate myself. But I love me. And how can I feel lonely when I have Jesus? And I know it, it, sound, it doesn't make, not make sense to many people. Or, but I think it's with time. Maybe I've gotten used to it. I've gotten so used to being with, uh, alone with God. And my soul is no longer tied to the world. That's a better way to put it. So my soul is no longer tied to the world. And that's exactly what God wanted me to be, to be separated from the world. But of course, for me, it was anxiety that forced me to be this way. But where in the past I would feel lonely, I don't feed off those emotions anymore. So it's important to guard your heart and watch what you're feeding. Uh, don't feed your soul how you feel. Don't look to feel... Uh, um, otherwise, you find it is in opposition to the Spirit of God. You should rather look for the joy that comes from the presence of God. You should look to f have God feelings, to feel how God feels. And that's the right one, because you are the Spirit man. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians. He said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man may perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The inward man is being renewed by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not on the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Elsewhere Paul said, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that all of you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk or uncleanliness with greediness. But all of you have not so learned Christ. If so, that all of you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that all of you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that all of you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In Hebrews it says uh, this uh, prophecy that was given in the Old Testament. And it says, For this is the testament that I will ordain with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will give my laws into their soul and write them upon their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. I need to yield now to the Spirit of God and feel what God feels. There's a verse I like in Luke after Jesus is resurrected and there are these two people walking on the road to Emmaus and they encounter Jesus and Jesus shared with, with them prophecies concerning himself from the Old Testament and then later he, he disappears and, and these people they left in awe and they're saying this and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us while we talked with us 
in that way and while he opened unto us the scriptures so there's a, a God sense we have where we feel according to God in Romans chapter 5 5 it says the hope that we have in God doesn't disappoint because the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given to us it says in uh, 2 Corinthians for the God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts to bring forth the light of the knowledge of the clarity of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Um, there's a psalm as well which I like. It says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light we see light. And it's when God shines his light upon us. We're able to see in accordance with God. We're able to see the world as God sees. We're able to see through his word. We're able to see our lives through his word. We are redefined by his light. He said, thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. It is the truth. It's like, it's like taking the red pill. Because this world will pass away. But we see it so, it's like we're in this matrix. And we see it so like this is the real thing. But even this world was built by the spiritual, by the things that are not seen. That is the reality. And behind this world that seems too, so real to us is the spiritual realm. And you are also a spirit. And when you die, where will your spirit go? And that's what we need to be asking. Where will our soul go? That's what we should be asking. So we're called to walk by faith and not by sight. He says the righteous shall live by faith. We are not called to live after our feelings because the, our feelings are not reality. Our feelings cannot be furthest from the truth because if we could see through God's eyes, we could see the hope that God has in store for us. And we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. He says, set your affections on the things above, not the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with the Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall be manifested, then shall we also be manifested with him in glory. So your real life is hidden in Christ. Don't let this world deceive you. Because in this, this world, one day the sky is going to be rolled up like a scroll. Where no things will be revealed. And he says we shall appear with Christ when he appears. In glory. So don't be troubled. Don't, be, don't feel sorry for yourself when you're going through suffering in your life but rejoice it says the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold which perishes nevertheless is tried with fire might be found unto praise and glory and honor when jesus the christ is made manifest whom having not seen he loved in whom though at present he see him not yet believing he rejoiced with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul. It says you are attaining the goal of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. 